in the Bible it says that Jesus was a prophet. So hold on. Now, the Bible you're going to quote there says Jesus is a prophet. I know where you're going with this. When you quote that verse from that book, I'm going to then show that book where Jesus is more than a prophet and he's Muhammad's God and master. So you're going to accept it? If you show me it. Okay, now show me the verse you want to show me Jesus is a prophet. I'll change it for your sake, even though I was a bit left. Go ahead. Yeah. John 9, 17. You're sure about that, right? Okay, now watch what you didn't quote. Okay, you ready? Yes. So again, they asked the man who used to be blind, what do you say about him since he caused you to see? He is a prophet, right? Okay, you quoted this, right? Yes. Okay, let's see what you didn't quote. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. John 9, 35 to 38. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, so he found the man and said to him, do you believe in the Son of Man? Pay attention to that. I'm the man replied, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said, told him, you have seen him, and he is the one speaking with you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. He worshipped him and because he's the Son of Man who healed his sight. Now, do you accept Jesus as a Son of Man who was to be worshipped. Mm, that's actually kind of. I don't know. I didn't read that part. Oh no, I'm shocked. How about <laughs> the next chapter? Since you went to John, right? Yes, yes. Okay, I know you keep laughing. I like that. I'm okay. No, I'm sorry, sorry. I just. I, I, no, it's okay. I'm glad you're laughing. No, I'm glad. I'm not upset. I'm saying okay. I'm glad. But here, let me go to more little translation of the English. All right, hold on, buddy. So you don't accept that Jesus, Son of Man, who is to be worshipped, right? I do believe he's the Son of Man, but not. No, 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 no. You don't, because the Son of Man that he's claiming to be, uh -huh. the Son of Man that he's claiming to be is the Son of Man that Daniel the prophet saw riding on the clouds of heaven, whom all nations must worship as he rules over them forever. Let me show you what son of man he claimed to be. Okay, because okay. you just said you do believe in it? All right, let's see. Let me show you what son of man he's claiming to be. All right? Okay. One second. All right, go on here. No, you don't believe it, but that's okay. Because all right. this means that you just committed shirk according to Islam. Because this is a violation of Tawheed al-Ibadah. Tawheed al-Uluhiyah and violation of Tawheed al rububiyah Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so you got it, huh? At least you're honest. I like you, man. Yeah. You're honest, man. Here, let me show you. Let me read the, the new Indian version. Prayer for India. You all love India. Okay. Let's read it again. Jesus said, let's go here. Sorry. Oh, my apology. Ugh, my throat. I need more water. Uh, boy, see, I'm getting a mental. It was not John 9, 35. And I can see even bald, handsome men. Have a shot. All right. Jesus said, heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Okay. What son of man? Here you go. Mark 14, 61, 62. But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? Are you Messiah, Ibn Allah? Blessed one is the name for Allah. Right? Yeah. What did Jesus say? I am. Oh, so he's not a Muslim, huh? Mm. I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Now, is there anyone who sits with Allah on the throne? No. Jesus says, I sit on the right hand of the Mighty One, meaning the Father. Do you believe Jesus is seated with the Father in heaven? No. Do you believe he's going to come with the clouds of heaven? The clouds of heaven, no. Okay, now look who he claimed to be. What son of man? Daniel 7, 13 of 14. In my vision at night, I look. This is a prophet who's writing about a vision Allah gave him, because you believe God of the Bible is Allah. We'll, we'll agree for that for now. Over 500 years before Jesus was born. And there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. You see what Jesus was claiming to be? Yes, yes. But notice the son of man. He approached the Ancient of Days. That's the one we call the Father. So he came to him. And was led in his presence, and he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations, peoples, every language, all the Arabs in Arabic, everyone, worshipped him. His dominion, the rule of the Son of Man, is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. So Jesus is telling the blind man, he is this Son of Man who is to be worshipped by everyone, and he confirmed it here. I am the Messiah, Son of the Blessed, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven. So Jesus sits with the father on the throne and he's worshiped by all peoples in all languages forever. Do you believe this? I, I never knew this till like, till you told me. So, but where did you get John 9, 17 then from? So when I downloaded the Bible app, I just kept on like going through, right? And then I kept on searching up verses in uh, like on online to see if there's any like, you know, mistakes with the Bible or anything like that. And I got John 19, 9, 17 okay. from that. Well, since you quoted John 9, let me show you something else. All right. Okay. Oh, by the way, you don't believe Jesus is with the Father on the throne, right? No. no. But then what do you do with the Quran? Let me show you real quickly. I'll go back to the Bible. Because okay. the Quran says, where is Isa according to the Quran? In heaven. Where in heaven? 
Next up. Chapter 3, Surat Al Imran, Ayah 55, Surat An Nisa, 4158 says, Allah took Jesus to Himself. Allah said, I will take you to me. And it says, Allah took Jesus to Himself. So, where is Allah? In heaven. But is Allah in heaven or above the heaven on the throne? Above heaven. But Allah said He's going to take Isa to Allah, to where Allah is. So, where is Isa? Next to God. But then you're just saying Isa for 2,000 years is with Allah above the throne. How's that possible? I thought he's just a creature. Here it is. Let me enlarge it. He, he's not any creature. He, he was a, a dearly beloved prophet. Please be honest. Okay, but there are many prophets. None of them were with Allah for 2,000 years. Mm, uh, Surat al Imran, Ayah 55, <clears throat> Muhammad Hassan. Lo, God said, Oh Jesus, verily I shall cause thee to die and exalt thee unto me. Hmm. Exalt thee unto me. You're going to be with me. Here's another one, the clear Quran. <clears throat> Remember, when Allah said, Oh Jesus, I will take thee and raise you up to myself. Hmm. Okay, now watch here. Surat An Nisa, chapter 4, verse 158. Watch here. Hmm. Nay, God exalted him unto himself. God took Jesus unto himself, and God is indeed almighty wise. Rather, Allah raised him up to himself, and Allah is almighty and wise. So how come Isa is with Allah for 2,000 years, above the throne with Allah? I thought that Allah alone is on the throne, and he alone is above the heavens. No, I don't, I don't know, to, because right now, you know, I'm just knowledge on Islam, but... That's good, but now let's I, go I am a Muslim, though, you know. I do have knowledge, but not everything, you know. I can't answer right. everything. So let's go back to Jesus again, and what you missed in John 8. Okay, now let's see. Because you kept calling Johnny. According to the Quran, who is a nur? God. And he is the light uh -huh. of the heavens and the earth, right? Yes. And one of the 99 names of Allah is a nur, right? Yeah. Can you, you know that no prophet in the Quran or in the Old Testament claims to be a nur, the light, right? Yes. Because only Allah can be a nur? Yeah. Okay, you just claim Jesus is God. John 8 12, the same John you read. Okay. Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will never walk in darkness, will have the light of life. So Jesus says he is the nur, el nur. The light, yeah. But I thought Jesus is a Muslim. Mm -hmm. But uh, what if he's like referring is like, if you follow me, right, the way I follow and pray to God, right, the way I like worship God, yeah. you, well, you will find light in that, you know? Well, he could have said it that way. He didn't need to say I am the light because no prophet speaks that way. No prophet says, I am the light. I am the light. I will show you the light. I will show you the path. But Jesus says he is the light. Mm. But you also can make like the like an exception because in the Bible, like I know Jesus claimed to be God, right? Like oh, you, says, know, you know in the Bible he claimed to be God, huh? Yeah, in the Bible it says he's God. Like, but it doesn't specifically say, I am God. Like Jesus Christ doesn't Yeah, he doesn't need to. Because if I show you, says, I am the Son of God, would you believe him? That I am the Son of God. I am the Son of God. Because you don't believe Jesus is God or the Son of God, right? Yes. So, do you accept this then? Because he didn't say I am God, but he said, Do you say of him, John 10, 36, whom the Father sanctified, sent to the world, you are blessing because I said, I am the Son of God? So now he says he's the Son of God. Do you believe? Mm, okay. No, do you accept it or not? Nah, I can't accept it, but I, okay, I so, do believe it because it's in the Bible. Yeah, but you don't accept it's true. Yes. Because if you do, that means Islam is false because Jesus is not the son of Allah, right? Yes. So you understand, even if Jesus said, I am God, you would say, well, no, he didn't say that, they lied. So hmm. even if there was a verse I showed you where Jesus yeah. says, I am God, he says, oh, that's corrupt, that's changed, he never said it. Because here, when I show you, he says, I am the son of God, which contradicts the Quran. No, I don't accept it. I don't believe he said it. So it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Even if he said he don't accept it. But there's a reason why he didn't come out and say it that way. But I will show you what he did say. So let me show you something. You ready? Um, yes. I'm going to show you from Quran. Surah Al-Hadid. Surah Al-Hadid. Okay. Yeah, that chapter 57, verse 3. It's now, my own Quran browser is not working. i got to go to this other one. But let's go there. Can I, can I pull up from my own Quran? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You read it. Okay. Yeah, if you want to read, I want you to read it. No, no, you, you, I'm not a good, I'm not a bad okay. reader. Okay. okay. All right, I'm trying to open up my browser. Yeah, I'm sure it's not opening up. Yeah, my browser. Okay, I'm gonna have to go to another one. All right. Okay. For some reason, not opening up. Okay, but I'm gonna go to this one. Okay, 57 verse. 57 verse three. Okay. Okay, 57 verse three. Now watch what's gonna happen. I'm gonna bring it on the screen for everyone to see. 
57 verse 3. Oh, I know what you're getting. Yeah, he's the first. Oh, uh, what does it say? You read it? Yeah, he's the first and the last. And my, uh, How many my... first and last are there? The... He, he is the first and the last. Al awwal wal akhir. Yes. Chapter 57, verse 3. Let me see if it shows up on the screen for them. Let me see, because it's got to be large enough for them. See, yeah, let me make it a little larger. Yeah. So how many first and last are there? No, the only one. Okay, so can a prophet say I'm the first and last? No. Okay, so get it, guys. Here, 57, 3. He is the first and last. Yeah. That's two of the names of Allah. The outward, the inward. He has full of knowledge of everything. Okay. Yeah. You know, the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament agrees. Yeah, yeah, I, I read that verse before. Because look what it says in the Old Testament. Let me do it this way, it'd be better. Isaiah 44, 6, 48, 12. Okay. So even the Old Testament, the Jewish Bible agrees, God is the first and last. This is what the Lord says. Let me get the Legacy Standard Bible one second, because it uses God's name, Yahweh, Yahuwah. Okay. Because you see, I don't know my alphabet, so I'm kind of slow. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go here. It's Legacy Standard Bible. All right. Now let's go here. This is, thus says Yahweh, the King of Israel's Redeemer, Yahweh host, I am the first and I am the last. So Jewish Bible, Quran agree, only the true God is the first and last, right? And there is no God besides me. Isaiah 48, 12. Hear, hear me, O Jacob, even Israel whom I called. I am he, I am the first and I am also the last. All right. So Quran, Jewish Bible agree, only the true God can be first and last. All right. Now, does the New Testament agree? Let's see. Revelation 1, 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not fear, I am the first and last. So even New Testament agrees, right? Yes. So according to Jewish Bible, Quran, only the true God is the first and last. And does the New Testament agree? Because who's speaking here? I am the, the true God, right? Yeah. The true God, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, now let's read it. The true God. Revelation 1, 17, 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not fear, I am the first and last, the living one, and I was dead. So when did Allah die? I don't know this. When did Allah die? When did he die? Come on, man. You just told me. He, I don't know what to say. Like, he, he couldn't die. But here, the first and last is Allah, the true God. And he says, I did die and I came to life. I did die and I came to life. Right here. Look, read it. It's right there on the screen. Yeah, I know. I'm reading that. So when did Allah claim to have died and come to life? When God. Who, according to the Bible, who died and came to life? Jesus. So you just admit Jesus claimed to be Allah. He claimed to be God. Mm. Ooh, that, oh. my, like my friends said, uh, they they were lying when you when you're like you're you're smart, smart. You knew everything. Well, your friends told you I'm smart. Did they say yeah. I'm also good looking? <laughs> yeah, my boy Rahman. He, he keeps on sending me videos about you. you can't stop. All right. Well, glory to God. The true God has blessed me to be smart because the true God wants to save everyone, because the true God revealed in Jesus loves you and wants you to be saved. Now. Let me give you a few more examples because you went to my Bible. Okay. okay. I'm going to show you in Quran. This is Surat Al Hajj, chapter 22. Surat Al Hajj. Surat Al Hajj, okay. Okay, chapter 22, verse 6 and 7. I got to open it up. So I got to go here. Chapter 22, verses 6 and 7. Let's go here. Where is 22? Okay, we go to verse 6. All right, we're going to go here. Okay, read 6 and 7. You open it up, you'll see it. Now watch. This is because Allah alone is the truth, Al-Haq. Mm. Right? Yes. He alone gives life to the dead. He alone gives life to the dead. Okay, pay attention to that. No, I'm paying. Okay, because you want to see something shocking. Okay. And He alone is most capable of everything. And certainly the hour is coming. There is no doubt about it. And Allah will surely resurrect those in the grave. So the Quran is clear. Only Allah is the truth. He alone gives life to the dead. The hour, Yom Al-Qiyamah, he will raise the dead from their graves, right? Yes. No prophet, no creature is going to do that. Muhammad is not going to do it. Moses is not going to do this, right? Uh-huh. Okay, now, again, because you went to the Gospel of John, John 9. Yeah. Watch here. Okay. Watch here. Let's see what's going to happen. Now, watch here. This is the same Gospel you're quoting, which is fine. John 5, 21. Look what Jesus, Jesus is speaking. He's not the Father, for just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life... Even so, the Son also gives life to whom He wishes. So He just said, I'm not the Father, but like the Father, I give life to whom I want. Okay, that's one. John 5, 25, Jesus speaking. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of who? The Son of God. And those who hear will live. But your Quran says, Allah is going to give them life at the hour. But Jesus says, no, that's me. I'm going to do it. Hmm. I'm going to do it. The Quran says... 
Allah's the truth. He gives life to the dead. At the hour, he'll raise them from the graves. Jesus says, no, I'm the one who's going to do that. At the hour, I will give life, because like the Father, I give life to my mind, and I, the Son of God, by the power of my voice, will give them life. But then watch here in 28, 29. Remember whose voice? The voice of Son of God, right? Now watch here, John 5, 28, 29. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming, there it is again, in which all around the tombs, the graves, will hear his voice. Whose voice was that? Jesus. Because he said in 25, the voice of Son of God, right? Uh-huh. And they will come out and live. Why does Jesus claim to do what your God says he'll do at the hour? Well, let me show you again one more time before you go anywhere. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Okay, watch here. Let's relook at the verse again. That is because Allah alone is the truth, right? Al-Haq? Yeah. He alone gives life to the dead. You will not find a single verse in the Quran where someone other than Allah is said to be the truth. Mm -hmm. Not one. It's one of his names. Now, I'll let you Jesus does here. Let me show you. John 14, verse 6. Watch here. Mm -hmm. Watch here. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Damn. <laughs> Damn. No prophet says he's the life and the truth. Yeah, Jesus said it. You saw it? Yeah. And no one comes to the Father but through me. So why does Jesus say he's the truth and he's the life? Something only God can save in according to the Quran. And he says, like the Father, I give life to my one. And at the hour, I will raise the dead from their graves by my voice. Something Quran says only God does. And then here again, John 6, 39, 40. Watch here again. John 6, 39, 40. Now this is the will of him who sent me. That of all that he has given me, I, because he's not the Father. That's why we're Trinitarian. I lose nothing but raise it up on the last day. Can you show me a single verse in the Quran where a prophet raises the dead at the last day? But Jesus says, I will raise at the last day, Akhira, in the last day, I will raise them up and make them alive. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise them up at the last day. So mm -hmm. that same gospel you read has Jesus claiming to be God without having to say, I am God, and yet He's not the Son, He's not the Father, He's the Son of God. That's why we're Trinitarian. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do with these verses of Jesus? Are you going to reject them? Well, I don't know. I can't say anything because, you know, like. Yes, I know. Yeah, you want like, to... I want everything. And I don't know, you know, but like. That's good. That's good. But this is recorded. You can go back and watch and then go back because it's recorded. But now you want proof that your prophet realized that what Jesus said, only God can say. More proof. Yes. yes. This is Hadith Qudsi. I'm going to send it to you in the private chat. Okay. Hadith Qudsi. Sheikh, can you change it to Aisha and Khadija? Okay. Anyway, keep making fun, Sheikh, and I'm going to send you to Mecca. Sorry, we got some Muslims that have no respect. They want to insult. Even though they're told in the Quran not to insult, lest they insult your God. All right, here you go right here. Now I'm going to show it to you on the screen. Okay. Now what I want to do is I'm going to enlarge it, and I want you to read. This is Hadith Qudsi. It's from Muslim. This is from Sunnah.com, so it's not Christian. It's not, okay. yeah. Okay. So can you read it? Okay, you want me to enlarge it, or you want me to just read it? Yeah, just read it. Just read it. On the authority of Abu Huraira, who said that the Muslim Allah said, Allah... Mighty sublime be will say on the day of resurrection, O son of Adam, I fell ill and you visit me not. He will say, O Lord, and how should I visit you when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, Did you not know that my servant so and so had fallen ill and you visited him not? Did you not know that had you visited him, you would have found me with him? O son of Adam, I asked you for food and you fed me not. He will say, O Lord, and how should I feed you when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, Did you not? Know that my servant so-and-so asked you for food, and you fed him not. Did you not know that had you fed him, you would have surely have found that the reward for doing so with me? Now, that's not in the Arabic, but that's okay. Mm. O son of Adam, I asked you to give me to drink, and you gave me not to drink. He will say, O Lord, how should I give you to drink when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, my servant so-and-so asked you to give him to drink, and you gave him not to drink. Had you given him to drink, you would have surely found that with me. It was rated by Muslims. So you see what Allah is saying? When you oh. feed my servant, you're feeding me, right? Yeah. When you don't feed them, you don't feed me, right? Yes. 600 years before this hadith. Watch here. This is Jesus again. You ready? Yeah. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Watch here. Jesus speaking. Remember, he, I said he's the son of man, right? Yes. But when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Does any prophet sit on a glorious throne? But Jesus says he will. Now watch what happens. And all the nations, all the nations, watch here, will be gathered before him, the Son of Man. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Now notice who the Son of Man is. The king. This is Melek Yomadim, because this is the day of judgment. Mm. So Jesus is speaking. He just called himself Son of Man. 
He says, he sits on a throne. The nations will stand before him, all of them. He's the king. The king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed of my father. See, see, this is Jesus, son of God. My father, this is son of God speaking. So he says, God is my father. I'm the king, son of man who sits on a throne. Come you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, which has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. <clears throat> for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, notice they call him Rabb. Rabbul Alameen. Malik Yomadin, Because he's the king who is the Lord on the throne on the day of judgment judging the nations. Mm. When did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king, Malik, will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of those brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. So when you did it to my brothers, you did it to me. But now watch the part that was okay. in Hadith Qudsi. Watch this. Okay. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. Does that sound familiar? Yes, yes. I feel like we just read it. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they themselves also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now watch Hadith Qudsi again. Watch this. Okay? Right here. Okay. Allah will say on the day of resurrection, O son of Adam, I fell ill, and you visited me not. He will say, O Lord, and how should I visit you when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, Did you not know that my servant so-and-so had fallen ill, and you visited him not? Did you not know that had you visited him, you would have found me with him? O son of Adam, I, was, I asked you for food, and you fed me not. He will say, O Lord, and how should I feed you when you're the Lord of the worlds? He will say, Did you not know that my servant so-and-so asked you for food, and you fed him not? Did you not know that had you fed him, you would surely have found that reward for doing so with me? O son of Adam, I asked you to give me to drink, and you gave me not to drink. He will say, O Lord, how should I give you to drink when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, My servant so-and-so asked you to give him to drink, and you gave him not to drink. Had you given him to drink, you have surely found that with me. So my question to you is, why is Allah speaking the words of Jesus? And why is Jesus the king of the day of judgment, the Lord on the throne, who will judge all nations and will say the very words that Muhammad said Allah will say? Uh, in my thing, like, I think Jesus was like trying to say those, but people take it like as something else. And like, because the Bible was written by people Oh, so that's what you're going to say. See, the Bible changed. But you're the one who quoted the Bible. No, no, not the Bible did change. I'm saying, like, people wrote, in, like, they wrote the Bible. Just like people wrote the Quran and Hadith for Muhammad, right? People wrote the Hadith, yes, but the Quran is the Word of God. But Muhammad. who wrote it down? The Quran says that it was written down. Yeah, it was written out, but it's the Word of um, Prophet Muhammad wasn't the author. Was... So just because people wrote the words of Jesus doesn't mean they're not the words of Jesus. Just like when they wrote down the Quran doesn't mean, according to you, it's not the words of Allah. So writing it down is one thing. But what did Jesus say? He said what Muhammad said only Allah will say. So why is Jesus doing the things that only Allah does on the Day of Judgment? Because according to you, Allah is Malik Yomadin. He's the King of the Day of Judgment. He will judge people. He is Rabbul Alameen. But Jesus says, no, I the Son of Man, I sit on my throne. I'm the King of the Day of Judgment. I'm the Lord of the nations. I will judge them and I will say to them, you did not feed me when I was hungry. Everything Muhammad had Allah saying. Why is Jesus speaking as if he's God? I, I can't explain that to you. you know? yeah, I don't have that much information. But no, That's okay. What I'm trying to say is my Bible, the way it's written, shows that Jesus is not the Father. He's not the Holy Spirit, but he's God in the flesh, one with the Father and the Spirit. That's why we were Trinitarians. Hmm. Do you accept, like, if your Bible has some verses missing from it, do you accept that? Every book written by hand... Every book, not just the Bible, even the Quran. That's in your sources, that's in the Hadith. Every book written by hand, if it has more than one copy, if it has multiple copies, you're going to find variations. So you and I copy, let's say, Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay. The way I'm going to copy it by hand, because they don't have computers, they don't have WordPress, they don't have spell corrector. The way I'm going to copy it will be different from the way you copy it. So when we compare, there are going to be differences, because that's how it is. That's true of every manuscript. That's not just the Bible. 
But when you say missing verses, how do you know they're missing if you don't know what the Bible is? Mm. Uh, because there's a, in the Bible app, there was a verse I was trying to search up that wasn't there. Yeah, but yeah. the point is, if you have notes, they're going to tell you some manuscripts have this verse. But the Quran is the same thing. The Quran has, and I'm not trying to change, I'm just trying to show you. Yeah, yeah. Every book written by hand has variant readings. In the Quran itself, there are missing verses. There's one that you'll find, even now, depending on what the Quran, which Quran you read, where in the Qira'at, in the readings of the companions of Muhammad, their copies, they had a word in 33 verse 6 that says, and Muhammad is the father of you men, which is not found in the Uthmanic Quran. Here, let me show it to you. Okay. So what, so is it still like in the Quran today? Or? Chapter 33 verse 6. Okay. If you open up your Quran, I'm going to show you something interesting. Thank you. Watch it. Let me get there. Here it is. And I'm going to find you the article where it even says, now, Yusuf Ali should be online, but they probably removed it there. That's Yusuf Ali. Ah, I'm going to find it for you. One second. Okay. This is just one example of many. So I'm going to show you. Now, let's go here. Muhammad Asa, chapter 33. 33. Right here, verse 6. Now, here, Muhammad Asad. He's a Jewish convert to Islam who wrote the message of the Quran and provided a commentary. Now, here, 33, verse 6. Okay. Ready? Yeah. The Prophet has higher claim on the believers than they have on their own selves, seeing that he's a father to them, and his wives are their mothers. To open up your Quran, this phrase, seeing that he's a father to them, is not there. It's, it, it, it is, but it's like it's not that. It doesn't say that. No, it doesn't say seeing that he's a father to them. Yeah, it doesn't say that. Are you reading? That's my Quran, though. It's just one Quran, though. I don't no, know. it's saying there's different English. Right? What, dude, buddy, right here. There are dozens of English translations, and if we go to the Arabic Quran, you have different qira'at. But I'm talking about English translations. This is Muhammad Asad. This is Mustafa Khatab. Here. Let's see if Mustafa Khatab has that. And we're, oh, sorry. Uh -huh. I have translated by this guy right here. What's his name? Hold on. Right here. Well, hold on. Let me see. I can't see your screen. Let me put right, it up. Right. Ali, yeah. Quli Qarai. He doesn't yeah. have that verse. It's right here. Ali Quli Qarai. Look, read for me 33.6. Right, let me go back to this. 33.6. Six. I'm done. We're back to thirty-one. Let me just pull it up right here. Right. <laughs> the prophet is closer to the faithful than their own souls, and his wives are their mothers. The exactly. Stop there. It says, "And his wives are their mothers." Right? Yeah. Now, this is what you don't have in, in your version. Here it is. One more time, 33, verse 6. The prophet has a higher claim on the believers than they have on their own selves, seeing that he is a father to them and his wives are their mothers. You don't have this part. No, I don't. Exactly. Mm. Is the Arabic translated differently too? Yeah, because there were different Arabic Qurans that had this. But when Uthman burned the Qurans, he left this out. And I'm going to show you who admits this. Not me. Let's go there. One second. There it is. Okay, 33 verse 6. Okay, let me do this one more time. i got to find the exact wording. Okay, seeing. He is a father to them because I'm going to get you the article right here. Okay, and you're going to see them admitting this or I have to go to my other website because I don't have the hard copies of the Quran with me. All right, let's see. Here we go. All right, right here. Let's find it. All right, right here. Here you go, verse 6. All right. Okay, let's read it. Right. Oh, didn't have it here. Darn it. Didn't have it. Okay, let me see. Assad. Is Assad here? No, okay. Give me a second. Because it's not like I have the Qurans with me to show it to you. I have to yeah. find them on, which is what sucks. But let me go here. Let me do this. Well, if not, I'm going to have to go to the other website, which we can do. But let me just see. I'm sure it's here. I just got to find the article. Yep, here it is. I knew I was going to find it. Okay. Here you go. Okay, watch here. Ready? Yes. This is Muhammad Assad's note. Okay, this is his note. The companions invariably regarded the prophet as a spiritual father. Do I have it on the screen? Yeah, I should have it. Yep. Yeah, okay. The prophet is spiritual father of his community. Some of them, Ibn Masud, that's Muhammad's companion, Abdullah ibn Masud, quoted by Zamakhshari, or Ubay ibn Ka'ab, that's Muhammad's other companion. And these are the two of the four men that Muhammad said learned the Quran from. Ibn Abbas and Muawiyah, as quoted by Ibn Kathir, hardly ever recited the above verse without adding by way of explanation, seeing that he's a father to them. So they're saying these companions of Muhammad, who learned the Quran from Muhammad, this was part of their reading. And many of the tabi'in, meaning their followers, including Mujahid, Qatada, Aqriman, Al-Hassan, Tabari, and Ibn Kathir did the same. That's why he included it. That's why he says, hence, my interpolation between brackets of this phrase. However, see also verse 40 of this surah, 
because funny now, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, in his Quran, and he has a note, page 1104, footnote 3674. In spiritual relationship, the prophet is entitled to more respect and consideration than blood relations. The believers should follow him rather than their fathers or mothers or brothers where there's conflict of duties. Now watch. He's even nearer, closer to our real interests than ourselves. In some qirats, or you can say qiraats, meaning some Arabic copies, like that of Ubay bin Kaab, Muhammad's companion, occur mm -hmm. also the words, and he's a father to them, which implies spiritual relationship, and connect with the words, and his wives are their mothers. That's missing. You don't have that. And again, this is from Qadi Iyad, Musa Ali Hsubi, Muhammad Messenger of Allah, as Shifa of Qadi Iyad, pages 29 to 30. And it says, an unusual reading of the Quran includes, he is a father to him, but it is no longer recited since it has variance with the version of Uthman. When Uthman burned the Quran and standardized his Quran, they wouldn't recite this anymore, even though it was in the Qurans of the other companions of Muhammad. So why is it gone? Uh, I didn't even know that it was I know they translated it different in English. No, this is the Arabic. It didn't say it, it says the Qira'ah. Yeah. But now, another thing, you know, there are Muslim translations that omit. Verses 128, 129 of the Quran. There's what? There are Arabic, there are English translations of the Quran that remove chapter 9, verse 128, 129. Verse 28, 29. If you go to Surah al Tawbah, the last two ayat, 128, 129, there are Muslims that are Quran Yun. They uh -huh. reject the deed, but they say the evidence shows those verses were added. They should be removed. Let me show it to you. you ready? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, there are some Muslims that are so weird. All right, we're going to go here to chapter 9. Every Muslim brother has it. Yeah, but I'm going to show you who uh, Khalifa. Rashad Khalifa, you ready? I'm going to open up for you. Oh, my goodness, not this. I want to go to the page. Let me put it up on the screen. Brother, we save no one. Only Jesus saves. Don't give us too much credit. Okay. Now, here you go. Now, this one, see, they added It's not supposed to be there. Let me find it online. Is this Rashid Khalifa? That's wrong. It can't be. Yeah, okay. See, they're dishonest, dude. They added, oh my goodness. Let me do this. Okay, let me go here. Rashad Khalifa. Man, well, how dishonest some websites are online. Here you go. Okay, Rashad Khalifa. Here it is. You see it right here? This is yeah. his Quran. Rashad Khalifa. Let me enlarge it, but let me go to chapter 9. Let us let me enlarge it. See, some websites. My goodness. Sorry. They even tamper with people's Qurans. Okay. Now, let's go all the way down. Where is 128, 129? It's gone. He ends it with verse 127. He has a footnote explaining to you why he rejects it. Oh. If you open up your Quran, it will have verses 128, 129, right? No, my Quran only goes to Surah 114. No, if you if you open up chapter 9, it's got a, not. We're not saying Surah. Chapter oh. 9, Ayat 128, 129. Okay. okay. Uh, and you're going to see, if you go to Surah Al-Tawbah, chapter 9, Okay. It ends with verse 129, not this Quran. This Quran ends with 127, and he explains why. Uh, 129, right? Yeah, so your chapter 9, does it end with verse 129? Yeah. But notice his Quran, it ends at 127. There is no 128, 129. You see it here? Yeah. No 128, 129. Now you click on the footnote, and he explains to you why. Okay. All right? Here okay. he goes. Here's the footnote right here, down here in the bottom. You see? Yeah, yeah. This is the only surah that is not prefixed with the Bismillah. This phenomenon has puzzled the students of the Quran for 14 centuries, mm -hmm. right? And many theories were advanced to explain. Now we realize that the conspicuous absence of Bismillah serves three purposes. It represents an advanced divine proclamation that the idol worshippers were destined to tamper with the Quran by adding two false verses. 9, 128, 129. Huh. No, I don't know, but 128 and 129. He says these are false verses added by the unbelievers to corrupt the Quran. That's what he said, not no, me. Not, I don't know. I'm just reading the verses. He has deep. I don't know. I don't even know why. He's he just saying God is kind and merciful. And Yes. Yeah. But this Quran says 120, 129 were added. They're corrupt. They're not part of the Quran. I'm not saying he's right. What I'm saying, what's trying to show you is the Quran has thousands of variants and missing verses, just like because any bulk copied by hand before printing is going to have variant readings. Hmm. Uh, yes, you know. Oh, the Bible. Okay, hold on. But we have over 25,000 copies mm. of the Bible in different languages. We have nearly 10,000 copies of the books of the Bible in Latin. We have 5,300 plus 
of the books of the New Testament in Greek. And then all the other copies, we have over 25,000 copies. They are preserved. It's not my statement, it's a fact. So even if you wanted to corrupt this copy, you have thousands of other copies that you cannot corrupt, you don't have access to, showing you it's impossible to change the Bible completely because you may omit a verse, but these copies have it. That's how God preserved the Bible because he made sure they copied it and spread it all over the world, making it impossible to do what Uthman did. Uthman ibn Affan, around 650 AD, he gathered all the Qurans and he burned them and he standardized the one that he liked. You want me to show you that too? Did he burn all of them? I don't think all of them. Yes. Yeah, he burned them, but Abdullah bin Masood refused to give up his copy. And there are others who are still reciting the Quran according to Abdullah Masood and writing it down. But he had them burned. If you like the work we do, please consider giving this video a thumbs up to help spread its reach and save more Muslims, atheists, and non-Trinitarians on YouTube. If you're not subscribed, we would love to have you on our team. It's completely free. God bless you all.